Yo, what is going on guys? Flashverse here and welcome back to another video on DC's Legends of Tomorrow and this will be my review for Legends of Tomorrow Season 5 Episode 1 well the proper Episode 1 because like last week was Crisis so it could be like Season 5 Episode 0 that counts as so this is the original Season 5 Episode 1 and I was debating on whether I should do this review or not like before I watched this episode but this episode absolutely shocked me so I'm like you know what I'm gonna do a review for this because I absolutely loved this episode but before I do that you guys don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way and obviously spoiler alert for those who haven't watched this episode then stop watching this video because there are some spoilers that I will be covering that you guys wouldn't want to hear from me but for those who are staying, you are welcome to stay. And here is my review for Legends of Tomorrow, Season 5, Episode 1. So this episode kicks off with some voiceover of some guy. And we get, we get like past events of the Legends in the form of a newspaper. We then get Mick awarding some like prize to some people, best picture I think it was. And then after that, we get the shot of the Legends that we did in like season 4's finale which was a pretty cool shot but then we get the reveal that this episode was in the form of a documentary in which I was pretty interested to see what they would do in terms of this but this director I've forgotten his name but he's trying to make this like movie by showing people like what the legends do in the wave rider and how their missions go things like that so since then I was very intrigued to see what they would do now we go to the wave rider and Ava Sharp first introduces herself and we find out that due to the events of last year the time bureaus got shut down and Ava is trying to like keep the legends intact with the wave rider. We then see Nate and he gets introduced and he's just like a historian as he is a historian and he talks about like the legends do like the other legends Sarah Mick and Ray doing a crossover which is why the wave rider looks so empty when it's not supposed to be. But then we meet the new guy, due to the timeline change of last season, and he goes by the name Behrad Tarazi, and literally, he's just like Zari, except he's male. Um, we then see like Behrad explain that his past self is born in the exact same day which he's doing this interview, which was pretty cool. But my first impressions of this guy were really positive, and I was very excited to see what his role would be in this episode. We see Charlie and her role wasn't that small, she just had this one scene and she just uses the time ship and she wasn't in the episode after that. But then we meet Mona Wu, who you guys know me, she's my most hated character in all of the Arrowverse, well, besides Felicity's mother. We then, well, we find out that she's the agent of Mick uh, with this like Rebecca Silver novels. But then, the most fun one, in my opinion, was when we got the introduction of Gary Green. And we find out that he's Constantine's new apprentice. And just seeing Gary and Constantine working together was so much fun in this episode. We then have the Legends doing some like sort of party to welcome the Legends who have joined the crisis. But Ava mentions to those specific Legends not to talk about Oliver Queen due to this heavy, due to his death heavily impacting Sarah. But then we see Mick, Sarah and Ray arrive from the crisis and they get surprised from this party. Now one interesting thing we found out was that due to this Hayworld timeline change, no one remembers Zari, but instead they remember Behrad as Ray and Nate are Ray, Nehra, Ray, Nate and Behrad are literally like brothers. They were such good friends when they've only met each other for like such a short amount of time. But then Ava reveals to Sarah that they're filming like a documentary type thing about the legends, which Sarah was totally against. But then one part that really made me laugh was when they were filming Mick and then Mick like slaps the camera out of the guy and he's like, get out of my face. But then from Ray, we we get Ray mentioned like his his doppelganger kingdom comes Superman. And like he says, he's handsome as they are literally the same person as he's talking about his doppelganger. But it was just a cool crisis reference. But then Ray wants to show the temporal zone to the director. So they go there and then Ray introduces himself. 
and we find out that some some people are now afraid of Ray due to Ray being controlled by Neron last season. But then there was like this time quake that occurred in the temporal zone, which was interesting, and Gideon started to malfunction, and then this then led to the legends time traveling to nineteen seventeen Imperial Russia. We then end up in the funeral of Gregory Rasputin, and he's dead to the Ru- he's dead. So the Russians are doing like some sort of prayer to this guy, but then when they close his coffin. Rasputin kicks that like lid off and he rises back from the dead. We then have the legends return back to the wave rider and Sarah is talking about how she could use this opportunity to clear her head from all the bad things that have happened. And after that we head to Constantine and Gary and they're going demon hunting and they find out from the mother of this child that her son has been acting very strange. So Constantine goes and takes a look, but while he does that, he f- he finds out that he finds out that this demon was possessing a child. And while Constantine was doing the spells, he finds out that the demon possessing the child was someone familiar from hell. And Constantine offers this demon a drink. We then have Behrad give Sarah a like gift type of thing. As he drew a picture of Oliver Laurel and her together, which seemed to impress Sarah and like calm her down, basically. Then we have Nate and Ray coming up with with a plan for Rasputin, but only both of them go like none of the legends go at first. Now Ray sticks this camera on his helmet, which looks ridiculous on his suit, but like he does it so like people could see like stuff from his point of view when he shrinks as the atom. But while that's happening, Mona was trying to write a love letter to Rasputin to stop murders from happening, I believe it was. Um, Ava was planning on killing Rasputin to give Sarah like a kind of break. So Nate and Ray go to the play- palace, but then they get jumped by Rasputin's men. But Ray says, no, sorry, not Ray. Uh, Nate says, no, we're here to interview Rasputin. Then... That is what happens. They go to interview Rasputin. So Nate introduces himself to Rasputin and then he like tells Rasputin what, like, what a camera is, stuff like that. So Gregory Rasputin then introduces himself and he talks about how he's a monk and has been resurrected somehow. He doesn't know how. So it says like possibly a zombie. But then we see Ava getting the sniper ready. But then Ray notices the sniper so he flies into the gun and stays in there, stopping Ava from pulling the trigger. But then Mona enters as well with her love letter, and Mick snatches it off her and starts reading it. But then Rasputin notices that Nate has like a hole in his heart, in which like he notices that Nate loved the girl once, and Rasputin offers to re- hypnotize Nate to find out who this mysterious girl is, and Nate accepts. We then go back to Constantine and this demon possessing a kid and they're having a talk to, and Constantine finds out that Astra released most of the bad guys from hell and brought them here. So then Constantine does his spells and sends that demon to hell after, he, after getting what he wants. So he pretty much backstabs this demon. We then get Sarah looking at that picture that Behrad made her and she spots the camera and she confesses that like she hates this documentary so much and stuff like that. But then she gets a call from Constantine in which she finds out how to stop Rasputin. We then cut back we then cut back to Nate being hypnotized, but then Ava grabs another gun and manages to shoot Rasputin. But because Rasputin is like a zombie, he literally stuffs his hand inside his mouth and he pulls out the bullet. Um, he also defends himself against Mick's ha- heat gun as well. And since then, I knew that Rasputin was going to be such a great villain for the premiere. But then, in the Wave Rider, Sarah and Behra then find out that the legends are doing stuff behind their backs. This then leads to Sarah confronting the legends, and we find out that they did it to stop her from constantly thinking of Oliver. And this was probably my favorite scene. 
in this entire episode as she talks about her like not wanting another like dead friend and she, like she's already lost one good friend that being Oliver and she cannot afford to lose another one and then Ava's just like oh we 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 wanted you to do like we don't want you to like forget him and stuff and then Sarah's just like how can I forget him things like that and then this is where the legends find out about crisis as Sarah briefly explains what happened like they go to the dawn of time and then a new reality forms things like that we then cut to Nate and Beh- Behrad and Nate tells Behrad that there's a girl from a previous timeline that he remembers dating but he cannot like picture her but this is obviously Behrad's sister but Nate doesn't know that but we find out that the director has been left behind and Rasputin starts talking to the legends which I think was funny where he does like this villainous laugh and then his guards are like sir you've got the left wrong things like that and then Rasputin goes does the like the the classic super villain laugh basically so this is when Sarah and Behrad decide to crash Rasputin's party without the other legends. Rasputin then has like guests over in which he tries to ki- he's planning on killing them. Sarah disguises as like a person serving them and Behrad disguises as a Russian soldier. Sarah then finds out that the cakes that were being served was a poison. So Behrad uses his like powers to get like make it like go away drop on the floor. And then Sarah then confronts Rasputin and Rasputin mind controls all the soldiers in that area. So Sarah alone is up against these soldiers. But wow, Sarah put on such a great fight scene in this fight scene. This then leads to like Ava disguising as the daughter of the Russian family and quickly like throws a knife at Rasputin, although it's pretty much useless to him because he's like a zombie. As I've said before. So the rest of the legends joined the fight. And it was just so entertaining to watch. But then while that fight scene is happening. Ava apologizes to Sarah. About telling the legends. Like, to stop talking about Oliver and stuff. But then Rasputin. Controls Mick. Nate and Mona. But Sarah comes up with a very smart plan. Where he throws Ray into Rasputin's mouth. And this was such a great scene, and it leads to like the the boys level decapitation, as Ray enlarges inside Rasputin's body and then pff, goes everywhere, all his remainings, basically. This then leads to the legends storing Rasputin's remains in a jar, so they like they don't bond together and resulting him to like come back to life. But then we get the legends attending like this Comic Con type event. And the legends basically ruin the director's day by saying, oh, this is fake, things like that. And we then see Constantine in the Wave Rider and he drinks Rasputin's jar, which was disgusting. While Sarah and Ava got grossed out as well. And Constantine does this so he can go back to hell and can like stop Astra from doing whatever she's planning. After that, we get Mick handing the Rebecca Silver novels to no- Mona. As Mick says like he has no more no time to rob anymore and this novel writing stops him from robbing stuff. So Mona now becomes the writer of the Rebecca Silver novels. And then she leaves the Wave Rider, which in my opinion is a good rid like is a good thing getting rid of her. But this episode ends with Nate fixing Gideon and Nate finds out this mysterious girl he's looking for. Um, which is Zari and Gideon plays a tape from Zari and Zari says like find me and stuff now obviously Nate doesn't know her name and stuff but like now he knows what she looks like and this will play a part in I think next episode or like the episodes to come and this is where the episode ends overall I love this episode it was by far my favorite like DC show for this week like Legends was the best for this week and I will give this episode a 9.5 out of 10. I love this episode so much. And I cannot wait to see what is next. And my highlight character is Sarah Lance. As she was pretty cool in this episode. Um, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you guys have enjoyed my video, please give a like and subscribe. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of this episode. And I will see you guys in my next video.